It doesn't occur often that I consider a product I review a fail, but this term might apply to this CPU cooler, the Raging Tech Tysis. Sorry Raging Tech, you're gonna hate me for this. Initially, a beefy good looking air cooler I expected to be the best performing one I have ever had the pleasure to deal with, but boy was I wrong. Currently, this Tysis comes in at about 75 US dollars. So what's the matter with it, what's so bad about it, or are my complaints simply exaggerated? Right after taking this cooler, the heatsink and the two included fans out of the box, I thought to myself, wow, that's one hell of a beefy good looking air cooler, I can't wait to test it. The first problem I encountered was attaching the fans onto the heatsink. To avoid vibration noise, Ragentech decided to not go with those metal wire clips like almost all other manufacturers go for, instead they include these rubber thingies. Great idea actually, if it wasn't for the error in measuring. With the included fans I can only attach either the top or bottom part of the fence, since the other side simply doesn't match up with those holes. Luckily I did manage to somewhat secure the fence by avoiding the exact instructions in the manual, otherwise a good idea but poorly measured. Then another thing I noticed is that one fan is 4 pin, the other just 3 pin and no splitter cable whatsoever is included. Other than that, when fully assembled, the Tysis looks just gorgeous, I truly gotta admit that. We are getting 5 8mm thick heat pipes and judging by the specs, all is looking pretty good so far actually. But then came the installation procedure. Actually mounting the heatsink onto my test bench went pretty well, no problems there. Attaching the fans was a different story though. For the fan in the middle I could use these included rubber thingies, not for the fan either on the left or right. While two metal wire clips are included, they can't be used for the outer fan sadly. On one side my RAM blocks the installation and on the other side it's the motherboard's I.O. cover and VRM heatsink. To maximize cooling performance I decided to go for the tower beside the memory slots. Since there was no way I could officially mount the fan to that tower, I needed to be a little creative and just went with a rubber band. It does the job, sort of. Now I could have installed the cooler in a different orientation to avoid interference, so I could easily attach the fans the intended way. However, most PC cases have a rear case fan that exhausts air and not that many actually exhaust through the top unless it's one meant for liquid cooling or generally a more expensive case. So if one really wanted, one could bypass this problem. As for RAM clearance, luckily, despite being so large, the heatsink does not interfere with any memory modules and I could in fact occupy all 4 DIMM slots, as long as it's not super high profile RAM. What I dislike about the fans is that one is PWM with a 4 pin and the other just a 3 pin, making it hard to keep the fan speeds under control. So is that all? How does the Tysis perform? It turns out the cooling performance offered by the Raging Tech Tysis is just fine. It can keep up with other high-end air coolers, sort of, but unfortunately is a lot louder, much larger, therefore taking up lots of space and putting lots of unnecessary weight onto the motherboard and then of course, it costs more than those other air coolers in the charts. So overall the Tysis can't really be considered a good choice when there are much cheaper, smaller, quieter and easier to install alternatives available. So as good as an impression the Tysis initially made, it's not a CPU cooler I can recommend. Or did I miss something? Am I just plain stupid? I don't know, you tell me. And as always, thanks for watching.